Happy Sunday, Living Word. We're going to start off with a little bit of worship. Amen. Where can I run from your presence? Where can I flee from you? Even if I hide on the highest mountain, you are there. Where can I run from your presence? Where can I flee from you? Even if I Deepest valley, you will find me there. Deeper than any ocean, your love goes on and on and on and on.
Welcome to our Living Word Home Church Service. I'm Pastor Benny, and if you're joining us for the first time, thank you for being a part of this time with us as we learn and grow in God's Word together. Amen. Well, folks, as if you've been following us, we had just finished our series, uh, Discovering Who You Are. Today, we're going to start something a little fresh, right? Embracing God's best. How's that sound? Amen. But before we get started, let's just enter the Lord's presence. Let's just bow our heads and enter the Lord's presence right now. Father, we thank you for your word, which you promise will not be returned void. We ask you to search our heart, mind, soul, and spirit. We ask for your blessings on your word, that it will flow through us like living water, Lord, refreshing us and blessing us beyond measure. We thank you for this victory, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, Amen and amen. Well, folks, like I just said, embracing God's best. Today's theme, you know, I guess, you know, as you might wonder, oh, well, what is the theme? It's from good to great. How's that? Good to better. How's that? You know, so we want to be able to see God manifest His Word, His truth that blesses us beyond what we consider good. You know, I know this is probably going to be a stupid question, but how would you like it to be better, right? At least better than last year. You know, better physically, relationally, financially, in every aspect, it being better, right? Being great. And I'm talking about way better. Pursuing a good life. You know, according to, again, the biblical standards, what God calls a good life. But here's the thing. Here's an ouch moment. Right? Are we ready for that? We have to let go of the good to grab hold of the better. That's right. We have hold on to so much stuff that we consider good, and we're not going to be able to see better unless we let that go. I want you to turn your Bible right now to the book of Psalm, chapter 84, verse 1 and 2, the NIV version. Right? And it says, How lovely it is your dwelling place. Lord Almighty. He says, my soul yearns, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Listen to what the psalmist is saying. And now if you go to verse 10, right? It's, it says, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. He said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. I mean, if you listen to the psalmist here, he's saying that well, basically that God's living presence is the greatest joy. That's right. Being in God's presence is the greatest joy. His presence helps us grow in strength, grace, and glory, folks. He also describes, again, symbolically, an act of shouts to the world that believers were no longer required to stand at a distance. That's right, separated from God. This is what the psalmist is saying, that we can walk into God's presence and commune with Him by name, at any time, anywhere. That we can just walk into God's presence. Imagine that. Folks, he said, better one day with God than seeing a lifetime of happiness. Now, here's another ouch moment. People who insist on happiness never find real joy. Because what they seek is an imposter. That's right. God says joy is found in the hidden place with him. I don't know if you've heard of the Psalm 91, folks. Right? We can be so busy looking to fill our void everywhere else, in everyone else, and ignore God's presence. That is scary. Psalm 91 one, the Amplified Version. Listen to this. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. 
And you need to finish reading Psalm 91, folks. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. If you don't know what courts symbolizes when it uses that in those terms in the scripture, it means the presence of God. Folks, his ways are far better than our ways. Don't underestimate it. His love is better than life. His blessings are better than all the material possessions we can even consider. And we are talking about, when we're talking about what? Greater than life, he's talking about hope, joy, power, purpose, provision, forgiveness. Now, it doesn't mean, I want you to listen to this carefully because it doesn't mean you won't have problems. He says, we'll be going to light in darkness, peace in the storm. That's right. Right? Being in a storm with Jesus. There are so many who are tempted to embrace the idol called feel good. And that's usually what it gets comes down to, right? Wanting to feel good. Think about that. Holding on to the idol feel good. Because in life's journey, folks, you know, if you think about it, believers get the idea that if they uh, do all the right Christian things, life will work in orderly and fulfill in a fulfilling way. Now, it is true that a relationship with Jesus gives life and life abundantly. But we must understand that, the, that life in God's kingdom is not life without challenges. There will be crisis and even conflict because God's ways contradict what the world values most. Listen to what Paul says in the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 17, the NIV version. He says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Jesus makes a powerful statement in the book of Matthew here about what's better. Better than good. I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 10, verse 39, the NIV version. He says, whoever finds their life will lose it. Whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. It's a powerful statement, both positive and negative, right? Because if you hold on to this life, the rewards, the leisure, the power, the popularity, the financial security, you think you get in this life, and as good as it sounds, it's truly empty. And it may cause us to lose and even forfeit the best Jesus offers. The best way to enjoy life is to loosen our grip, our greedy grasp on earthly rewards. So we can be free to follow Christ. That is far better. But that also means refers to our time, folks. When the relationship fizzles, when the money dwindles, you know, when the saltiness starts to, everything starts to lose its saltiness. You remember the message last week? Then what? Because it all phases. Matthew chapter 19, 16, you remember the, the rich young ruler that's right, rich, young ruler who went looking for Jesus, you know, for eternal life. You know why? He had everything that life sort of has to offer. Didn't he have everything, anything that someone could possibly want or have in life? Why wasn't it enough? Can you ask yourself that question? It was good. But it was not great. How do we go from good to great? That's right. To good to better. Folks, God's best. And here's the number one. We have to live with an ongoing, unending awareness of God's presence. That's how. 
Now, how do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple if you really consider it. Now, here's an ouch moment, though. Life can never exist for the goal of satisfying desires in competition with the desire to know God. I hope that makes it clear. I'll say it again. We have to live with an ongoing, unending awareness of God's presence. Number one, right? Because the ouch moment is that life can never exist for the goal of satisfying desires in competition with the desire to know God. When a spiritual life becomes a normal life, good becomes better. The word says to dwell in the house and the temple of the Lord's gates, right? Because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's who we're meant to be. Colossians, turn to the book to Colossians, chapter 3, verse 17, the easy reversion. He showed that you belong to the Lord Jesus with everything that you do, with everything that you say. He says, always thank God the Father in the way that you serve Jesus. Not the way you say you're going to do it. The way you do it. Bro, from God, from good to better, folks. The folks, the number two. We have to start with developing the habit of constant communication with God. That's how. It will make, an unbel it will make life unbelievably better. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, the NLT version. Make sure you memorize the scripture. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. That's right. I love the easy read. So if you have the easy read, you might want to read that. The easy read version, verse 18 to 19 says, Whatever may happen to you. Continue to thank God. He said, God wants you to do that because you belong to Christ Jesus. He said, do not stop the work of God's Spirit. That's 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, 19, easy read. See, always available. You remember the acronym I used? Fat, right? Where is it? Faithful, available, teachable. Always be faithful, available, and teachable. Number three, from good to better, instant obedience to God. What is instant obedience to God? Well, turn to Galatians chapter 5, verse 25, the easy reversion. Again, Galatians 5, 25. Now, it is God's Spirit that gives us life. So we must let God's Spirit lead us in how we live. I love the NIV. And this is as simple as you can get when you read it in the NIV, right? Since we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit. Referring to folks, personal integrity, godly character. Sometimes God removes happiness. He removes happiness from us so we can find contentment, which is far richer than any happiness. Broken dreams can be a prelude to joyfulness, a joyfulness that very few experience. Folks, we are in a journey from good to better. Don't stop now. Let's keep in mind what God has planned for us. Point number four, we need to have a daily desperation for God. This is vital. Psalm 63, 1-3, the NIV version. Listen carefully. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being belongs for you. Think about that. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power. And your glory, because your love is better than life. My lips will glorify you. This is David, a man who knows what it means to earnestly seek God. 
A man who's the Bible describes a heart after God. David had experienced God's presence in the wilderness. In a what? In a desolated place. He communes with God when no matter what's happening. God made us made it available for us. I remember this. This uh, I guess he was a poet, Julian of Norwalk, back in the thirteen hundred. He said, uh, "Seeking is as good as seeing." Love that. He's saying, "Seeing with faith, hope, and love pleases our Lord. It opens our horizon." To live with an ongoing, unending unaware, uh, awareness of God's presence, folks. Imagine having a day with God where His love is better than life itself. But we have to prioritize time in His presence. Study, pray, dwell in the temple courts and gates. Remember, we are the temple. You are the church wherever you go. We are meant to have that constant relationship. Why don't we desperately need God? Think about that a minute. Why don't we desperately need God? Psalm 34, verse 8, the Amplified Version. He says, Oh, taste, oh, taste, and see that the Lord, our God, is good. How blessed! Fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God is the man who takes refuge in him. You find that, you might want to read 1 Peter chapter 2. You see? Because it tells us, grow up in our salvation. How to grow up in our salvation. Once we were, we were once we have had a day with God like that, you would never want to do, do one without him. It's indescribably better. Folks, live with an ongoing, unending awareness of God's presence. That's the way to do it. Develop the habit of constant communication with God. That's right. Instant obedience to God. What is that? We're going to need to discuss this. A daily desperation for God. You know, so often I remember when somebody wanted me to get saved when I was not a godly man. And some people want sometimes want you to get saved because they, they want their life to be better. Almost, if I got saved, then I could treat them better. God's plan was to get us saved to deliver us so we can be better. In his kingdom here on earth. Folks, let's be better. Let's seek what God is offering us right now, what we can actually attain if we take a minute. We're going to be focused on learning to understand our spiritual gifts. God has given us a gift, each and every one of us as a gift. Let's use it. Don't bury it. Let's multiply it. Let God use it to empower you to see things far beyond the moment. Amen. If you're here right now and you are looking to experience this kind of good to better, to great, I want you to bow your heads right now. Let's enter this time together as we prepare to hear what the Lord is going to say to us as we open that door of that sanctuary before the Lord. Let's get to that place right now. Let's ask God to have its way in us right now. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we thank you this day for your word which you promise will not be returned void. We thank you for allowing us to see things through your eyes and not our own. Prepare us to do better, Lord. To get better, not just settle for good, but to do great things for your kingdom here on earth. Prepare our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit. Teach us what it means to honor you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for this victory today. In Jesus' name, and all the saints said, amen.
and amen. Well, we're going to be having our Q&A following this message. It was short and sweet, but we want to be able to have a Q&A discussion. If you've never been in, this, uh, in our group discussion, you're welcome. You can find it on our website, livingword.myc, or you can find it right, right, right after the message here on this YouTube. And join us. Just hit the button and, and join us as we have this uh, discussion on the message. If you have any questions, then you can follow us again on our website and get all the information you need. Remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Take care.